Hello and welcome back to CTI Group's channel. As we've discussed in a previous video, Norwegian Cruise Line have produced their own docuseries called Embark. Our goal is to keep crew members informed on the cruise lines they are working for and what those cruise lines are up to. The first episode was released and within it, top NCLH executives discuss all the recent preparations being done for the cruise line to have their exciting comeback this year. Before we get to the video remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can be updated whenever we release new content. Now let's see what this docuseries has to offer. It's been more than a year since Norwegian Cruise Line last set sail, and the entire global cruise industry came to a standstill as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. We've lost $50 billion in market capitalization in less than a year. I can't think of anything that has affected the world during my lifetime like the pandemic. Today, ships are empty. Buffets and restaurants are closed. The pandemic's just, it's here and it's been tough for everyone. There's no traffic on the racetrack and the theaters are dark. I could never imagine how it would affect our industry the way it has. All of that, though, is about to change. This is the story about Norwegian Cruise Line's return to service. A series about our great cruise comeback. I love a comeback story. In Miami, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings President and CEO, Frank Del Rio, has called a meeting with cruise industry leaders to provide important new updates about NCL's planned return to cruising. 2020 was a washout, right? 2021 is gonna be a transition year in the cruise industry. We're gonna start bringing our ships back slowly. We wanna make sure that we can execute flawlessly. Our goal is simple, we will never have a confirmed case of COVID on board any of our ships. That's the goal. That's pitching a perfect game. The economic impact of this crisis is also top of mind for Frank and these leaders. Not only has the global cruise industry taken a staggering $70 billion global financial hit, but millions have been placed out of work, 250,000 in the US alone. All the more reason why today's meeting is pivotal. We're one of the largest cruise companies in the world. But when you face something like a pandemic, you really start thinking more about the people, the personal challenges that we're all going through, whether it's our crew, whether it's our shoreside employees, the stevedores here in this building, and the taxi drivers. There is a cruise community that oftentimes is overlooked. And these people have taken it on the chin over the last nine months or so. It's not over, but we begin to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But I want them to all know that we are all working collaboratively. This common thread of wanting to do good for the sake of being good uh, is alive and well. And, and I've committed that uh, we, we will not start cruising until I feel 100% comfortable. Frank, I'll just tell you, I'll attest to that. I mean, you have said it, I don't know how many collective hours you and I have spent together with your counterparts at other companies, but when sailing is resuming with passengers, it is with these enhanced health and safety protocols that I think you'll, you'll find in very few, if any other places. That's a, a great pivot point. So we can sit here all day and for weeks to come and lament, but lamenting won't get us anywhere. We gotta talk about the great cruise comeback. I get excited thinking about the great comeback story and it's begun. Mate! Hey! You're here! 
At NCL's Innovation Center, technology partner Keith Powell is meeting Simon Murray to review upgrades for the new and improved embarkation process that the team has been refining to ensure the health and safety of guests before boarding a Norwegian vessel. I'm Simon Murray, Vice President of Guest Experiences and Innovation. It's a great role, it's a very cool job. It involves you know, physical things like our world famous go-kart tracks, technologies, it involves things that really touch all aspects of the guest. Health has always been important, it's just more important now. We want to make sure that everyone has a healthy and safe environment, but now we've got some technology and tools to really help the teams on board with that. So you've got some goodies to show me today. Yeah, absolutely, so the, the biggest update we've done was the pulse oximeter. In all these years I've been around, 20 years, never did I think I'd be talking about pulse oximetry, but here we are, right? It's the amount of oxygen saturation in your blood. In addition to that, it reads the pulse or your heartbeat. The redesigned check-in process includes not only a pulse oximetry reading, but a temperature check and state-of-the-art, no-contact facial recognition scanner. We're utilizing the picture that we took at check-in or the selfie that they took at their online check-in. Right. And we're using that for the facial recognition technology to look them up and quickly take their temperature and they can move on. So come on, do the selfie. So we can do a... You're a selfie type of guy. Come on, let's see it. <laughs> look at that. Wow. That's going to help just change this process for the better. So very impressed. Good stuff. We want to make sure that the guests feel loved and cherished and really feel like family to us because they are. We've got preparation like I've never seen before in 20 years working for this company that's going to make the experience when we go back the best experience we've ever delivered to a guest. So as part of the new sailing with Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, we will be requiring guests to complete an online check-in process. It will be a requirement, not do I want to do it? No, you will have to do it to the point if the guest doesn't complete every single thing, they will not be allowed in the terminal to get on the vessel. So it's a very different approach, but it's very required. Even if they did all the steps, it's still doubling the speed from the normal check-in process. Yeah. Um, even adding the, the quick health screening in the beginning. Yep. I mean, it, it's just a few seconds per person to get the pulse ox and their temperature. And then we roll on and, and we hope that, you know, they've done the online check-in. What that's going to do is electronically shift all that information to the embarkation experience. So if the guests do everything we ask them to do, all we really have to do is validate through their passport or driver's license that's indeed them. And then essentially they get on the ship. It's great to see this is a, a real working product. Tangible. It really is going to change the experience for the better for every single person that cruises with us. The definition of innovation. And I can tell you now, seeing what's out there in different travel industries, nothing gets close to this. We are going so far above and beyond taking care of the health and safety of the guest and crew to make sure that everyone getting on board is in the right medical condition, ready for the cruise of a lifetime, and we get them home safely too. In New York City, NCL Entertainment's Robert Hertenstein is assembling cast members for a special production of Norwegian's favorite moments from their lineup of Broadway shows. This morning, he's reuniting with his lead from Footloose. It's all good. Yeah. Oh, listen, I gotta go. Zach, how <laughs> are you, man? I'm well, how are you? So great to see you. You too. I can't believe it's been, what, over seven months last time I saw you Seven in months, Tampa? yeah. March. And I rehearsaled? <laughs> oh, crazy. It's so good to see you. So have you talked to any of the other cast members? Back in March of 2020, as the cast of Footloose was about to launch their production on Norwegian Joy, their show was abruptly placed on hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Check this out. Yeah, this will work. <laughs> These wow. studios are amazing. Right in the heart of Times Square. Yeah, I know. It was so great to see Zach. He was our random Footloose. And this cast, this 3.0, is our third cast of Footloose. You could tell already they were something special. So here we are at Open Jar Studios. This is going to be our home for the next like three days as we work on the virtual cabaret we're going to film. It's going to be nice to get the cast Footloose back together and do what you mm -hmm. all love to do, yes. what you were hoping to do. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we've all been for the last six, seven months been just kind of stuck in this world of waiting. So when we got the news that we were sending people home, I had to go in there in the middle of their rehearsal, stop what they were doing, and um, 
tell them that they had to go back to the apartments and pack and we're sending them home. I'll never forget when we were in rehearsal and I burst through the door mm -hmm. and told you all that we were going home. Yes. Studios were being shut down until further notice. And then I think something happened in that uh, room, didn't it? Because someone had an idea, didn't you? Uh. <laughs> Zach, in the very Ren-esque attitude, if you will, said, come on everybody, let's do the finale one last time. You know, everybody was sad, crying, hugging, and whoever I was sitting next to just said, I wish we could just do it one last time. So then it was just the idea of like, let's, let's do it. What can happen to us if we just run the finale one last time? It was overwhelming. The, the love and passion was uh, extraordinary. And you could see it and there was laughter and tears and hugs and, and an encouragement that we're all gonna be back. But they were a, uh, uh, a true family in the sense of the word. I feel like Norwegian is going to give him the opportunity again. I think we're going to be able to give the opportunity to a lot more people because we're going to be the first live shows back on its feet. Redesigning and enhancing an onboard culinary experience that adheres to new health and safety protocols is a top priority for Norwegian. At headquarters, NCL's resident foodie, Wes Court, has been busy planning to re-engage key partners to ensure an unmatched food and beverage experience across the entire fleet. You know the guys over uh, in, in Wynwood yeah. that they were shut down for quite a while. Not only could they not sell beer to us, but bars weren't even allowed to be open. We felt really bad about partners like that that have not been able to open even. You know, it's one of the great responsibilities that I feel that we need to reopen the cruise industry and reopen Norwegian Cruise Line, not just for us, not just for our crew and for our shore side, but for the ecosystem that we sometimes forget all the different businesses and industries that contribute to the cruise industry the stevedores, the beer makers, the farmers. If we ever needed to be reminded of the motivations that we have of why we need this great cruise comeback to occur quickly, it's it affects small business people. There is a whole infrastructure underneath Norwegian that, uh, that gets affected. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see that they've suffered so much, but they're, they're happy that we're getting back. There's a lot of talk about what happens to our famous buffet once we get back to, to cruising. That's going to be the biggest change for us. However, it's not going to be like you're going into a you know, medical ward with people wearing hazmat suits, but we'll have service that, at the buffet where we serve the guests. They'll be able to most likely see the food and the menus are going to be as good if not better than ever but we'll provide that extra bit of service. So you're gonna give me all the variety that we enjoyed before, probably higher quality, and I don't have to roam the hallways looking for a plate, somebody will bring it to me? <laughs> and that's a bad thing? It's fantastic. It's kind of taken the buffet to an, a, a new And still all I can eat, right? That will be the same, but the service will be even better than before. Tomorrow I'm going to be heading over to Woodenwood Brewery. Anything you'd like to say of Pops and the guys over there? Tell them we're thinking of him and um, he's part of the family and we're going to get through this together. I'll share the message. Halfway around the world in Kuala Lumpur, Norwegian's Vice President of Hotel Operations, Jenny Lim, is gearing up for her team's return to service after months of being sidelined. When the cruise suspension was announced, I was on the Norwegian Joy. And at the same time, I also have Norwegian Jewel in my fleet that has full capacity of gas on board. The cruise is supposed to conclude in Papiete, 
but because of this um, pandemic, every port is shutting down one at a time as the day progresses. Sorry, we are closed. Um, sh we no longer accept cruise ship. Then you move on to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, the list keeps going. So then the company decided that huh, we need to find a place where we can safely disembark our guests. So we had to sail the ship to New Zealand. At that point in time, New Zealand was still okay to accept cruise ship. But um, just before we get there, New Zealand also announced shutdown, and then we move on to the next port. So eventually, we were able to safely pull the ship into Honolulu and we were able to disembark all our guests safely on a charter flight to several airports for them to safely travel home. Jenny was offered the opportunity to return home to Malaysia, but decided to remain on board with her team. I'm very proud and very happy to say that we have a very strong team on board the ship at that point. I actually had two windows to, to travel home, but I just didn't feel right to go Although I can support um, the ships and my team from home, however, it's, it's different when you are supporting them front line, side by side, on the ship with them. And you also want to make sure that your family members, your crew member on board, gets to travel home safely before you go home. I just make sure that I, I give my best support to the company and to the crew. Today, Jenny is reuniting with her team to discuss preparations for their return to service. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and it's so good to see all of you. How is everybody doing? Morning, good morning, Jenny. Jenny. Good morning. It's so good to see that everybody is in good spirit and good to catch up with you all. I've been working for Norwegian Cruise Line for 19 years and it's still counting. I have an exciting news. We are ready. It's time to talk about relaunching. Isn't it great? Hey. Very good. Very good. Thanks. Can I wait? The last six months has been pretty challenging and yet emotional. It's really touching and really heartwarming to see that we have so many dedicated team members um, ready to come back and is committed to bringing our ship's operation into the new level. Um, I am in close contact as well with uh, several restaurant managers and middle management and I'm glad to say they are all healthy at home and are all eager to return to our home away from home. Let's go around a little bit and, and see if uh, um, you guys have anything to share. Ronnie, how's, how are you, Ronnie? Currently, we are working with the new procedures for housekeeping, which will be, of course, for the new relaunch, we'll have the procedures changed. So the old procedures will be revised to the new ones. Hey, Chi Hui, how are you? Hi. Hi, Hi Chi. Uh, from the onboard revenue side, we're all doing well, staying safe, and uh, also just very excited, can't wait to return to service. I'm really looking forward to the day that I can stand at the gangway with my team to say welcome on board to the first group of guests that is stepping on the cruise ship. I just can't wait. Hey, vacation is over guys, time to get to work. Gotta wait for the action. Take care, please stay safe, and uh, till we meet again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Back at Port Miami, Frank Del Rio is meeting with NCL executives and cruise industry leaders. After an update on the refinement of safety protocols, the conversation takes a more upbeat turn. As I'm sitting here looking at the waterway, I can actually picture the ships in my mind, sitting right on the other side of the glass, welcoming our, our wonderful guest right here. From our side, I think mostly about this from a guest perspective. And I've just been amazed, thrilled, by the response we've gotten from our loyal past guests. And so many of them are just so eager to come back. They hang on the announcements we, uh, we send on what we're gonna do to have the ship safe, what we're planning to do from a product perspective to keep the product safe and exciting, because that's important as well. They wanna have great experiences. They welcome some of the competitive advantages we have with things like private islands and safety bubbles and universal testing. But, but all in all, I can only be warmed by the incredible support we get from our guests day in, day out on getting our ships back in service. Across town in the heart of Miami's Arts District, Wes Court is headed to meet with NCL's longtime partner, Winwood Brewing Company. Hey, hey Wes, nice to see you. There we go. Hey, good to be back. Wow. Back at Winwood. Winwood was the first brewery to reopen in Miami maybe seven years ago. Craft beer was exploding. 
This is before it, Wynwood became popular. It was still a tough little neighborhood, but they took a chance and opened a brewery. One of the things that you haven't seen is this beautiful brand new canning line that we've installed. We put the pallet in here, the palletized twist rinser, we got the filler, we got the seamer. We actually have a fill tech system, which is actually like an x-ray machine right. that will let us know what the fill level is. So here what we got going on, John and Antonio are brewing a uh, brand new batch of La Rubia. So this is the heart of Winwood Brewing, so to speak. You got yeah. beer fermenting over there, beautifully bubbling away. Yeah, I mean, it's been actually a really interesting time because it's allowed us a little bit to innovate. Yeah. So to try some new recipes out that, you know, since there is some capacity, we've been able to play around a little bit. We connected with them immediately. They're great people, a great product that we serve in our district brew houses uh, on board several ships. So what have you been up to? How have things been? I know been open and closed and open and closed. So like any other business, we've been scrambling, trying to survive, you know, Try, gotta be flexible. 70% of our business was on, on premise mm -hmm. before March. And so, you know, we definitely had to shift. It hasn't made up for it. You know, the yeah. volume hasn't made up for it yet. But, you know, we're hoping to get there. You know, we, we'll, we'll finish the year slightly down, but could have been a lot worse. For those that aren't in the hospitality business, especially in food and beverage, probably it's hard for them to understand what a challenge it is because you have to be almost at max capacity to really do well. I think the silver lining in all this is, you know, how resilient our people have been. You know, I'm, I'm sure you can share the same sentiment with your team and your staff, but could have been a lot worse. We're really proud to see that with a partnership such as yours, yours has elevated our brand and kind of like our stature. And when people see it in the shelf, they recognize it and they're able to pick up a six pack and take it home, so. You know, small business is being affected so much by this. We've got to get back to sailing and yeah, sure, no, NCL's hurt, we're, we're hurting. But think of all the thousands of people and hundreds of businesses like yourselves that are hurting because of this situation and, and ships aren't sailing. Although they were a very small business at the time and we were a pretty big business, our kind of core values really met up perfectly and we decided to take a chance with them and it worked out great for, for both of us. We have a concept in the district brew house that has won uh, a few awards as uh, best beer concept in the industry and I don't think it was by chance. And I see you've made some adjustments for doing business now. You've got, I see, floor signs to control traffic and QR code menus. We are following the, the CDC guidelines, you know, it's a must. If we want to survive, we need to follow and uh, we need to be responsible. As owners of the place, we need to demonstrate that we are following all those guidelines. Yeah, and I'm sure your guests appreciate that because we're doing the same thing. We've got three to 5,000 guests on a ship just controlling that many people uh, on board a ship uh, is, is going to be challenging, but uh, we think we have a great plan. Our plan is, sure. is to have the experience as good, if not better, than it was before. Partners like you are really going to be important when it comes to that. Back in New York City, as Robert Hertenstein is directing rehearsals for a virtual cabaret of Norwegian's Best of Broadway, he also has the unfortunate task of delivering some difficult news to the star of NCL's production of Kinky Boots, Alan Mingo. How are you doing with the quiet time in New York? I'm doing good. Poor performer is kind of hard being, you know, shut down for a couple of months, not being right. able to sing and dance, pick up a leg. So I do that at home by myself. <laughs> So you're quarantined very well. Yes, very well. You know, we're excited to get Kiki Boots back up and running. We have to hold a little bit on this production just because of the logistics of the show. So Kinky Boots, you don't realize how big that show is. Between all the costumes, the wigs, the makeup, the shoes alone are custom built. It's overwhelming. The character Lola doesn't really leave stage. She has nine shoe changes a couple of costume changes. So there was no time for me to sit down. <laughs> so literally we sort of, as soon as I go off stage, we're doing now quick changes, which were never really built as quick changes. But on the ship, we were able to finesse with my wonderful dresser, a way to continue on with the momentum of the show with all the quick changes that we're now adding. I mean, there are times where I'm literally off stage for like, on the ship right. for like 30 seconds. <laughs> 
I run off stage in one number and come back in and I have five people to literally throw the boots on, throw the outfit on me and I, they push me out. It takes a lot to ramp up to get to that production, to that quality. And we were hoping that that could be one of the first to come back, but the show is just simply too big to turn on that quickly. In order to do that show and to bring it back, we need that prep time. So we unfortunately have to hold a little bit before we can bring that back. How do you feel with all the theaters closed and entertainment? What is, what is that feeling for you? You know, even walking here, it's, it's sad seeing a lot. Of, I mean, we, we're lighting up a lot of the marquees here in Times Square, but if you notice some of the theaters, they're dark. Their marquees are down. I could never imagine how it would affect our industry the way it has. And it's been so heartbreaking for me to tell the cast that we're coming back, but not with your show right away. There's a blessing and a curse in this. If theater is going to get back, it's probably going to happen on the cruise ship first before they come here to New York City. 75% of the theater industry is people coming here and buying tickets to prop this up. That's very, very difficult. So when the pandemic happened, the bright spot out of the whole thing was at least eventually, knowing how big our show was and that we were probably going to be later on and, and moving, it would still be the first time we'll get to perform before we get to perform here. So eventually, we'll find a way to get it back on. With hope, optimism and science on our side, Norwegian Cruise Line's people and our partners are committed to overcoming the challenges that lie ahead. I want to leave you with a sense of excitement and encouragement and optimism that I know I have now. This is Norwegian's time to shine. It's the great cruise comeback. Next time on Embark, the series. These guys bent over backwards to take this island to the next level. They're definitely on that path to become the most spectacular facility in the world. We have the mask for the crew, we have the mask for the guests, we have the mask for the kids. When do we do every need? This, this is, is all for delivery for Friday. Next item I think is mustard cream, white wine, reduced spiny lobster. But it's really good. That was quite an exciting first episode. From finding out about new technology to hearing the executive's enthusiasm for the future, there is a lot to be hopeful for. It is clear that NCLH cares for everyone's health and safety as they move forward with their return to service. Tell us what you think about this first episode. Is it exciting to see such a great comeback story? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. That's all for this video. Have a great day, 